stressed and distressed debt has become um, an arena for open warfare among creditors. There are all manner of jujitsu-like maneuvers, right, to shift collateral, to gain documents, to create new tiers of seniority. Um, is that simply the new reality? And Canyon has to use whatever tactics are necessary to be competitive in that arena? Or are there lines that you won't cross? Well, there are lines we won't cross. Um, you have to be smart. You have to be sophisticated. You have to protect yourself, particularly if you're already involved in a situation. You have to be careful not just about the debtor who's opposite the table from you, but you have to be careful about the other creditors who are sitting next to you, who you think are similarly positioned, but in this day and age are being much, much more aggressive about doing things that might benefit themselves, even though they own the same security that you own. Uh, and to, to your detriment. So you require that level of, of, of sophistication. But we're not a do-anything-to-anybody uh, shop. I think that um, when I grew up in the business, I remember that people used to quote Gus Levy at Goldman Sachs, which is where I started my career, as saying you have to be long-term greedy, not short-term greedy. I think that some of the short-termism uh, really comes back to bite people. We have to be trusted in the marketplace. We have to be trusted by issuers. We have to be trusted by sponsors. We have to be trusted by management teams. And we have to be trusted by other creditors. That doesn't mean we're going to be unsophisticated. It doesn't mean we're not going to protect ourselves. But, but uh, and, and different firms draw the line in different places. But we have to be trusted. So we have to behave in a certain way and take a slightly longer term uh, point of view than, than maybe everyone else takes. I love the idea of behaving, conducting oneself in such a way that you earn the trust of your counterparties, you earn the trust of issuers, you earn the trust of the market. But there are people who are behaving in a fashion that doesn't earn any trust. If anything, it violates the trust, and they aren't being punished for it. I mean, those might not be the first people that one invites into a deal. If you're involved in something proprietary that has great risk return, you call people you trust and you get called by people you trust. So I think, I think the market has a way of working these things out. I think regulators have a way of working these things out. I think courts have a way of working things out. It, 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 I think it's just part of the give and take. You have to be much, much more aware of this, though, and much more sophisticated and much more cynical today than perhaps you had to be um, a decade ago. Canyon has made its biggest profits on distressed situations, Lehman Brothers, Caesars, Puerto Rico. And it's impossible not to have noticed the lack of distressed debt during the pandemic. Um, people have asked, and I'll ask you the same question. Is the age of distress over? No, distress will come back. It always does. Because this type of environment is exactly what creates mistakes. Uh, you're seeing acquisition. As I said, you've got big portions of the equity markets that are in business just to make acquisitions. That's what private equity firms' business is, making acquisitions and then selling companies. Um, SPACs, they go out of business if they don't make acquisitions. And when people make acquisitions and they use debt to make acquisitions, there will be mistakes. The other thing I should say is that um, there are industries going through tremendous disruptive change right now where there is distress right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I think finding the most interesting opportunities is difficult, but look in the real estate business. You know, CBL is a secondary mall operator that's a fairly recent and significant additional position we have because of the disintermediation, disintermediation excuse me, of, of retailing because of the internet. B malls are in trouble, but that doesn't mean that all the real estate is bad. Some of it's quite well located and has alternative uses. If you look at retail, you look at um, multifamily is a, is, a, is a protected class that's doing well. Industrial is doing well. But if you look at office, we're sitting in a, in a building today that's probably 20% occupied at the moment in terms of people actually showing up to the office. We'll see how many people show up a year from now. A lot of people have gotten used to working, at least in part, from home. And so it's caused companies to rethink their space needs. And even a 5% adjustment can cause real, real issues. Hospitality is another area. We're clearly going to see permanent closure of a lot of hotels. And that will have effects on that business. 